The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Objective insight, expertise, tough guests. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Also available on offthehooksports.com. I compute and obey. Now to Dave Hooker. Ready. Yes, we will talk some hoops as Ron Slay will join us. As unfortunately for Tennessee, we wrap up the season with Ron Slay. Tennessee's basketball season ends in the Elite Eight with a loss to Purdue. Plenty of recap on the game on offthehooksports.com. So we'll visit with Ron Slay here momentarily. And then Caleb Calhoun with an interesting point that I'm going to challenge him on four downs with why Rick Barnes is equipped to have long-term success even at the age of 70. We'll talk some officiating, as I mentioned. Is Tennessee or Alabama more likely to become the premier basketball program in the SEC? Then it's halfway through spring camp, so we'll have a midway spring practice report. Our good buddy Josh Ward has that on offthehooksports.com, so we certainly encourage you to check that out. And where does Dalton Connect belong? and UT folklore. So a lot to get to on the program. Uh, Caleb, the sun did come up, although it's not the most beautiful day in Knoxville. Uh, Tennessee lost to Purdue. You and I discussed it on the post-game show. That was, I thought, going into the game, a bad matchup, and it turned out to be an even worse matchup than I believe to be the case. Yeah, that was a rough matchup, um, and we kind of talked about it going in. There's, We'll get to the concept of a 7-4 guy in college basketball with the rules and a guy that's that skilled and the issues that can come with it. Um, you know, I was covering this stuff so much, guys. I am sorry. I did not come up with an April Fool's joke to get you guys today, which I typically have on April 1st, but it's, uh, it's also my brother's. It's my little brother's 30th birthday today. All right, if you hate April Fool's jokes like me, hit like and subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate that. April Fool's jokes drive me crazy. I like playing practical jokes 365. I don't need a day to do it. So there you go. I'm glad Caleb didn't get us. I'm glad Caleb didn't get us. All right, so uh, Tennessee, by the way, will hit the podium this afternoon. It'll be Willie Martinez uh, talking about uh, his defensive backs, and we'll see if they can get better. He is one that just signed a re-up contract, so that's good news for him. We get into uh, Tennessee's basketball season, and as we look back over the year, we're going to get Ron Slay here in just a second, so hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, pick a word or two that you will use to describe this word. You picked historic. You've had a couple of days to think about it. Um, I, I just picked special. I thought it was a, a very fantastic season. Listen, you keep knocking on the door like this, you're probably going to break through at some point. And it sounds insane because I didn't think he was one of the top four or five players on Tennessee's team last year. But if they have Euros, is this a way different game if he's just able to go and D up Edie? Euros Plastic? No, because I mean, they maybe, but also if they just played a Streller or a walk of the whole game instead of Adu, they may actually win the game. So it's, um, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to come down on Adu more than people need to, but that was a transcendently bad performance yesterday. And so I, I don't by think, Jonas it was, it's a diff- yeah, by Jonas Adu. I mean, historically okay. bad. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not arguing with you, and a, a lot of the people on social media have agreed with you as well. So let's talk about Jonas Adu. I think it's a little too easy to throw it onto him, and yes, we know Waka fouled out, um, but it's it's a little too easy to throw it on him because that's just a bad matchup. That's, to me, the equivalent of picking up a guy to run a race against Usain Bolt. I mean, that they are that different level wise Jonas Adu may have played the very best he could play but Caleb it may not be enough to match up with uh, Edie 
No, he didn't play the very best he could play. I'm sorry, he didn't. There are certain ways where he struggles to match up, but one of those ways, is, one of the things he can do, I never expected him to win the matchup with Edie. Never in a million years did I expect him to win the matchup with Edie. I didn't expect that. What you could do is, for instance, um, not go 0 of 4 from the field, which he did, and miss those little 10 foot floaters when they play off under the basket. You could do that. Um, you could also know that the, the biggest thing he did that was a problem is he let Edie position himself under the basket too often. Once you let Edie get under that circle, that's a problem. You have to, you, you can't let him get the ball in that situation. And he would let Edie back him down before he caught the ball. And my thought is once he gets to a certain level, you have to get in front of Edie and just hope that you can deny the pass, deny the passing lanes. Cause once he catches the ball in that position, you're screwed. Well, now let's, let's, let's be careful here for a second, because again, that gets back to my point. Does Adu have the strength to keep Edie off of the – and I want to get to double team too, Robert. Gr great call there. But does Edie have – does Jonas Adu have the strength to keep Edie off of the block? And then I want to get into the officiating, and we're going to do that, so hang tight. But does he have the strength to keep him off the block? I mean, Edie's 240 pounds. He's a strong guy. Or I'm sorry, 300 pounds. Even... Yeah, excuse me. And Adu's what? About – 240 to 60 i would look i'd have to look that up i didn't expect it i mean i never expected him to have the strength to keep it off the block what i'm saying is you have to be smart once he gets onto the block you have to get in front of him because your best chance is to deny the pass to him at that point you can't let him catch the ball at that moment and again, again, i thought, I I thought I he did not like, play smart defense again i sound like jonas adu's agent here or his pr guy but I do think, Caleb, you're being a, a little bit hard on him. He's 240 pounds. Uh, he's just – I think Tennessee was just limited when they went against Edie at that position. I think it's kind of like at times, especially in those first couple of seasons. Now, there, there have been situations in which Tennessee has been bad in the secondary because of coaching. But there were situations in the first two seasons under Josh Heupel that they were bad because they just weren't good football players. Compared to Edie, Jonas Adu is just not a good basketball player. Compared to Edie. I did but I didn't expect him to get wrecked that badly. Again, the biggest yeah. thing, you you have no, you have there was no excuse for him missing those 10 foot floaters. That's what he does well, Edu. And he missed all of them. I have I have zero defense for him on the offensive side. I have zero defense for Sakai uh, Ziegler. I have zero defense for any of those guys uh they they needed to be more on the move brought to you by boundless moving boundless moving is who i use when uh, i made my most recent move and i'll use them again from their two hour minimum to turnkey operations they've got you covered uh, they are fantastic they'll do it all or they'll do what you need that's boundless moving go to boundless moving just google boundless moving in north carolina and all over east tennessee as well no the offensive end was a train wreck I mean, you can't argue with that at all. And if Tennessee plays a C-plus game offensively, they're winning that game, and we're talking about it was the final four. Final four. Now, as far as double-teaming Edie, I thought they should have done more of that. I don't know that it would have helped, but they started that early, and then they got away from it, and I didn't understand exactly why they got away from that. I... I they were getting wrecked on the boards. That's why they got away from it. When they were double teaming Edie, they were getting killed. They weren't getting any rebounds at that point. So they didn't really have a choice. That's why I think. And to explain that for those that may not know, you've got two, you, you got two guys. If, if he's playing one defensively, you've got one less guy to box out and go get a rebound. Yeah. And Purdue, they, they are very, very good at rebounding. Matt Painter, stresses that in practice a lot. So if you're going to double somebody, that a team like Purdue is going to get offensive rebounds after offensive rebounds. Now, agree. Um, I hope they do not remember this game for for all time. Well, he'll, he's coming back, so he's yeah. going to be fine. All right, speaking of, we're going to talk about um, uh, coming up, Dalton Connect, and where exactly he fits in, in Tennessee folklore. Now it's time for uh, today's tough question. Today's tough question brought to you by our good friends at, of course, Chattanooga Mortgage. And it is today's tough question, right? Today's tough question. Take a side. 
take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. Officiating, officiating, officiating. I will go ahead and tell you my career is something I absolutely hate to talk about, but I think it's a factor in this game and in the subsequent result. Tennessee was clearly on the short end of the stick of fouls called, free throws shot, and part of that was Edie, but part of that has to be officiating when it's that lopsided. Is that a true statement or not, Caleb? True or false? If it's that lopsided, it automatically has to be poor officiating. Yeah, or nay? No, no. That's not how basketball or any sport works. When one team is more penalized than the other significantly, that does not always reflect officiating. And people who... You guys, this has been Edie all year. He's been shooting tons of free throws every game. Now, if it was bad officiating, you could maybe say this was an anomaly. Now, you could say you could say that people in college basketball don't know how to officiate Edie across the board, but again, everybody's been calling Edie this way. So you would have to say that there's some conspiracy to get Purdue to the Final Four. Guys, Purdue's not a fun team to watch. The, if there was a conspiracy, they would not want Purdue in the Final Four. They're not good basketball to watch. I don't think it's a conspiracy. I just think he's incredibly tough to officiate on both ends of the floor because he's that big and that physical. It's kind of the Shaquille O'Neal who somebody mentioned on the message board. It was very difficult to officiate him. I mean, you could call an offensive or defensive foul every time Edie touches the ball, right? Yes. Exactly. Either, either somebody's hitting him or he's dropping his shoulder and backing into somebody. He probably is fouled twice as many times as he gets called for. That doesn't take away from Tennessee's gripes about the officiating. Here was my gripe about the officiating. You offered something up this morning, and I, it doesn't completely dismiss my gripe, but it changes it a little bit. He looked like he was camped out uh, in, in the paint. He looked like he was absolutely camped out in the paint. Three-second rule. I don't think it was called one time, but he just looked like he lived down there. And there is a three-second rule. I'm not okay with what uh, Caleb's about to tell you, and that doesn't make everything right in my mind, but explain the difference between the NBA and college. Yeah, so people need to understand, because I saw this on Twitter a lot, the three-second rule, because that's where a lot of people are mad. In college basketball, first off, let's get this out of the way. There's no defense of three seconds in college basketball. So while offensive players can't camp out in the paint, defensive players can camp out in the paint. So right. to neutralize that, what they've always said is if you step one foot outside of the paint or if you lift a foot in the paint, the defensive three seconds resets or the offensive three seconds, excuse me, resets. So in the NBA, you have to have both feet outside the paint planted, correct? Correct. You have to, you cannot have one foot in the paint. You can't have one foot planted in the paint for three seconds in the NBA. Well, you they, need have to one change, foot planted. they need to change that rule, not just because of ED, because it would open up the game more. I agree. But to change that rule, they have to add defensive three seconds in college basketball too. And they haven't okay. added that. Okay. Um, I'm fine with that. Uh, today's tough question. Was it the officiating? It's brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Go to Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com, Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com, or use the promo code HOOKED for 10% off. HOOKED for 10% off on all that premier hemp dispensary products right there at the Hemp House, Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Was it the official's fault? I'm going to say yes, which I never say, but I mean big picture. I don't mean just the dudes that were running up and down the court on Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Saturday, Friday, Friday, the days have run together, Caleb, but I've been working so much. Um, I, I, I'm not saying those guys were the reason, but the rules that we just explained to you and the overall lack of ability to officiate ed or at least have some sort of guidelines that officials can follow and you're at this point where he's in his second dominant season that's befuddling to me so i think officiating some people had said barnes was the problem i didn't see that but uh, officiating 
I thought was uh, certainly problematic for Tennessee and a fair concern. And Caleb, we might work together for 20 years and you'll never hear me say that. Yeah, I, I've never heard you say that. And I'll be fair to you because I remember the Alabama game in football last year where a lot of Tennessee fans blamed the refs and you and I were both like, yeah, that wasn't, there was a lot of things that went wrong for Tennessee football in Alabama that day. And, and people really went out of their way to try to blame officiating. I think this has been a problem for Purdue and Zach Eady all year because he is tough to officiate. But also, I right not a, look, pr- guy, not a problem for them. Like, right, it's been a problem for uh, other teams uh, uh, involving Purdue. B- right, but it's good for Purdue. Yes, but guys, Wisconsin did beat Purdue in the Big Ten tournament. Purdue's not undefeated this year, and also yesterday, Tennessee could not have asked for a better luck of the bounce than they got. I mean, this team shot. What was it, Dave? Like 47% from three. And Purdue, which is a 41% three-point shooting team on the year, was an abysmal three of 15. They called Purdue at an all-shooting game. They did. And quite and, and truth be told, they didn't take advantage of a lot of moments. There were a lot of things that happened that you can't blame on officiating. You can't blame officiating for a, a, as great of a game as he played. You can't blame officiating for Tennessee being down by five with 30 seconds left and Dalton connect deciding I'm going to drive to the basket where Edie can block my shot rather than trying to take a three, which I was hot from three all game. That's not officiating. You can't blame officiating for Zakai Ziegler going one of eight from three in this game. And you can't blame officiating for the fact that Jonas Adu disappeared and Rick Barnes had to pull him in the second half. I mean, these are things that happen in the course of college basketball. I think the big problem was, and by the way, for those who keep bringing up Toby Awaka and the foul trouble, Guys, Toby Walker's had foul trouble all year. I love Toby. I think he's a tough guy. He fouls all the I, time. I think a, a walkie a Waka is actually a foreign language for foul trouble. Oh, he's got himself <laughs> in a Waka. Yeah, he does. I mean, that guy seems to go out there with two fouls. Uh, reminds he does. me of a quick story. Reminds me of a quick story I'll tell about my son. We were playing my uh, high school team when he was in middle school, and I said, "You go out there," and I was joking around. And I said, if you don't foul out, you don't get to come home at night. He fouled out in the first half. Uh, I was just joking. He didn't know that I was just joking. Uh, <laughs> but he got to go home. That was a terrible, terrible. Story. All right, so where are we with the poll question? As that does involve officiating, you can vote on our YouTube uh, page. So go ahead and uh, give me that. The poll question today brought to you by our good friend Rick Terry at Rick Terry jewelry designs they want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry how about the fire opals that's a tennessee tradition a tennessee tradition go to rickterryjewelry.com so set up the poll question what do we got on there caleb and i'm going to bet without looking that officials are winning despite your strong argument to the uh uh to, to the differ yes uh so officiating is at 57 percent Tip times is 20%. Oh, what was the question? What was the question? Okay, okay, sorry. What is Tennessee's most legitimate gripe from the game? Um, what's the biggest gripe they could have? Um, officiating, tip times, location, or rule number 76, no excuses, play like a champion. Um, I vote, I would, oh, I'll tell you how I would have voted in a second. But as far as what's leading, officiating's at 58%. Tip times, 19%. No excuses, 25%. No one's really complaining about the location. Um, I'm going to give my thoughts real quick, Dave, and I'll let you give yours. Is that cool on this? Go for it. Go for it. So I want to break down to everyone. I've given you guys my thoughts on officiating. I agree with the 0% on location because even though it was closer to Purdue and I don't think Tennessee deserved to be in that bracket, it was a little unfair. Tennessee has way more fans than Purdue. It's not like Detroit's across the country from Knoxville. Tennessee fans could have made a better showing in that game. I think battered vol syndrome kept a lot of people from going to that game, Dave, because people just didn't believe that Tennessee there's too much evidence that Tennessee flames out in these type of moments. Um, So there's that. I have a feeling going into that that, that people were optimistic and almost, I thought just people I I rolled with, I almost thought they were too confident, but that Um, there is that battered vol syndrome. Yeah, there is, and particularly with Barnes. And I do think tip times is a legitimate gripe. To have to tip off it after 10 on Friday in a game that doesn't end until Saturday morning, and then to have to turn around and tip off at 2.20 Sunday afternoon, and for the NCAA to do that, also they can get duped in North Carolina in the main CBS slots. 
I think it's absolutely unfair and despicable and ridiculous and needs to be addressed. I don't know why they have to do Sunday afternoon tip times in the first place, but I, I just don't understand why they think that's a good idea. Now, it didn't hurt Dalton Connect. He was fine. But for a guy like Zakai Ziegler that's played 40 minutes every tournament game, yeah, it hurt him. I mean, the guy was totally off and he was tired because he played 40 minutes against Texas and 40 minutes against Creighton. And it finally came back to bite him. I'm sorry. I have a big problem with the tip times. That is the biggest gripe Tennessee fans have. They should be screaming to the high heavens about how unfair that is, the tip times. Now, this on the message board, it's funny that you bring that up. Somebody said they were surprised that Purdue had, what, three quarters, we estimated, of the fans in the stands. So mm -hmm. when you say t t tip times and location and some of those things, you're, you're basically referring to the fact that Tennessee did not have any semblance of a home court advantage, correct? That was a road that's, game. That's that was a straight-up road game. That's kind of all included in what you're arguing? Yep. I just want to. I want to make sure when I tell you you're wrong. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. It's officiating, and it's not just the. I'm sorry. This is the one time in my career I'm playing the O card. What? I, I'm playing it right now. It's officiating. The, not only was it officiating the fouls that were called, but it was pointed out on the message board. And I was going to say this: it's the fouls they never called against Edie. The offensive elbows the more diving on people. You talk about Adu didn't play his best and got wrecked. Well, he got physically wrecked in a game that's not supposed to be about physicality. So he gets knocked around a few times. He's not the same player he was to begin the game because that's not what he's used to playing. You can call that soft if you want to. I call I'm that absolutely fast. calling it soft. Okay, that, that's fine. And I didn't mean you as you, you rhetorically. But people can call that soft if they want to. But that's basketball. And basketball is not supposed to be the toughest sport in the world. Now, could he be in tougher mentally? That's debatable. But the fact that he got beat around physically, that, that to me is on the officials. You've got to call some of those offensive fouls. Hit the like and subscribe button if you agree with me and not Caleb. Dave, you sound like those like Michael Jordan fans in 18, 1990 that were whining about the Pistons playing mean. Are you? Were you one of those people? The Pistons played Michael Jordan too hard. No, but it's weird you say that because I was playing Michael Jordan motivational tape so on Sunday. By the way, like, like you're first of all, who is Dave? You're a Celtics fan from the 80s. That team won solely based on out physicaling teams under the basket. A lot of times, they exerted their muscle more than anybody, and they tried to punk everybody. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. If they, if everybody had a Zach Eady, I like that style of basketball more. I really do more than the run and gun and the shoot the three contested or not. <clears throat> I realize it's never going back. So I don't want to sound like old man on the lawn, but I love to drop it down low. Kevin McHale, the black hole. It's never coming back out. Yeah. I love that style of basketball, but I'm never getting it back. I loved it when I had all red hair and not white hair but I'm never but getting truth, all red hair back. Well, if some team has figured out a way to score that way in this era and it's working, the onus is on you to try to adjust to it. And I'm sorry if Jonas Adu is too soft to be able to say, oh, he's playing me too hard. Let me just take myself out of the game. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't respect that. Here's the, here's the issue with Edie. Whatever through his upbringing, nobody thought that he was either talented enough or that seven footers should be able to shoot the three because they never taught him ball skills. They never taught him all of those things <clears throat> that seven footers learn routinely. And it got brought over from Europe, right? Every seven footer can handle the ball. Now most seven footers can shoot. Victor Wampamyama is the prime example of that. Nobody went to Edie and ever did that. Nobody said, give it a shot. I'm talking about when he's eight years old, Caleb, and he's like a foot taller than everybody. Nobody did that. They had an old-fashioned, old-school coach, put him in the post, and that's not what basketball is nowadays. And it was like a square peg in a round hole. It just, to Tennessee, it didn't fit. And it wasn't going to fit, and it wasn't what they were used to as basketball. Your thoughts on that? So you're asking the officials to officiate it differently because it's a bad matchup? That's not how officiating works. Sorry that no, Tennessee didn't have the matchup equipped to handle Edie. That's not what I said, but I want you to finish your point. Brought to you by BetUS.
America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. What I'm saying is Tennessee would have been better off playing Kevin Durant in college than Zach Eaton. They would have been better off with a perimeter type of guy that they knew how to defend. They didn't know how to fit, defend Edie. And I wouldn't tell you out of the 300 or so basketball programs that are Division One, there's probably about 275 that would mightily struggle to defend him as well. Hence why you can't blame officials. It's Tennessee because they didn't know how to defend Edie. Now, you could say that's their fault or not the their fault. Have to know how to, the officials have to know how to officiate the big guys. Wait, so are refs supposed to come in and go, well, this Tennessee team is a bad matchup, so let's officiate it differently because uh, than we would otherwise because it's an unfair no. matchup for Tennessee. No, you officiate it how you would officiate it. No, no, they're supposed to come in and they're supposed to say, hey, Bob, Carl, it's um, I'm looking forward to doing the game with you tonight, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, watch out for the the – Purdue guy, the big guy, he throws around elbows a lot. He plays a little too physical at times because of his size. That You have that conversation. And if one or two of those – and he didn't get called for a foul until midway through the second half, Caleb. Because I – mean, You tell me he didn't have – he didn't commit a foul until that point? I'm saying that he's so skilled at being discreet that he gets away with it more than you only see it on the replays. I'm just going to say this. The move on Edie, Wisconsin did it in the – Big Ten tournament, punk him, punk him, cheap shot him, get him off his rhythm, and you actually have a chance. Tenet, Jonas Adu is not the one to do that because Jonas Adu is the one who got punked. Caleb and I talked at half, and I was joking, but apparently Caleb's kind of serious because uh, we were talking at half about what we were going to write. And I said, good gracious, you'd think they could just send a guy out there to take out his knees. I mean, if there were ever a situation where you would send a bench player out just to take out somebody, literally take out somebody like the like old a Kurt Pistons. Rambis type. Kurt, Kurt Rambis is okay, but he was a decent player. But yes, he did that. And I'm trying to think, there, there's all kinds of hockey goon examples that I'm sure we could come up with. Was it Marty McSorley? But the, there's there's a lot of guys back there, but uh, that I mean, just have a guy that comes in. He's twelfth guy on the bench, and he just is diving at Edie's knees. So, I mean, you could do that. That would be awful, wouldn't it? You'd rather lose with some sportsmanship, correct? Well, I mean, there's Kinda. you know, if if he gets hurt, yeah, that 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 wouldn't look as. I mean, then Rick Barnes would have the most tainted national championship of all time if he won a national championship doing that. But I mean, it would be it's like not than, it's not worse than five downs. I mean, to be fair, like I mean, you know, I say this all the time, but the Saints and Drew Brees have the most tainted Super Bowl of all time. They literally won a Super Bowl because they purposely tried to knock Brett Favre out of a game, and I mean, they had a bounty on him, so. It's for all you Drew Brees as a Hall of Famer people. Um, but anyways, I'm well, not the as good. Tennessee's such the good vi- I mean, they're such a good villain now. They're they're paying private planes to fly their quarterbacks across the nation. They're suing the university. I mean, all of it. Just imagine how hated Tennessee would be by the sports community if they had a number 12 guy that just went out there and took out his knees. I'm talking Actually, about with- a guy. I'm talking about a guy, Caleb, who's not even in shape. He needs to lose 20 or 30 pounds, and he's, he's all the way through basketball season. That guy. Dave, honestly, if they did that, they'd actually be the heroes. Have you seen the way other teams and other fan bases <laughs> talk about Edie? Everybody hates him. Everybody no, hates that was, Edie. I, it's, it was painful. Felt like I was pulling fingernails out watching that game. And that was yeah. what I, – I mean – We've gotten to be such a close community here that I've, I've I empathize and I sympathize for our, our Tennessee fans who are a part of it, and I've I just felt for them having to watch that game, knowing that you're going to lose for about the last ten minutes, but you still have to watch Edie go up and down the court, uh, and it just is awful. To here's watch. the awful. Here's the real question. I don't think – can Tennessee play Purdue in a game where it's not controversial by the officials? So we talked about this game. So, Dave, about four years ago with the Grant Williams team, Tennessee had Purdue beat. 
And the worst foul ever called was called in the Sweet 16 um, on Tennessee. A lot of Purdue to hit two free throws and go win the game in overtime. And then there was the Music City Bowl of football a couple years ago where Jalen Wright was ruled down on a clear touchdown he scored in overtime. And Purdue won that game in overtime. Um, I, I've, I've argued this before, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but success gets you better officiating. Okay, so when Tennessee and Kentucky play, people have said, oh, you got those Rupp whistles and you got the Rupp officials. No, th- those guys probably did a lot of have done a lot of their games and they're used to seeing them be in the right most of the time. So it's human nature on a close bang, bang call to err on the side of the more successful team. Tennessee has not been a successful team in the tournament and Tennessee is not a team that I think is viewed by a lot of these officials the same way even a Villanova is viewed um you didn't have to be a blue blood doesn't have to be kentucky doesn't have to be north carolina or duke but i think it's human nature if we all expect tennessee to blow it the officials are kind of expecting tennessee to blow it you earn your good officiating I mean, tennessee- this is life this is just life in general the yeah. more successful people get get more discretionary breaks i mean look in the Look in the legal system. Judges will give out way more lenient sentences to rich people who commit crimes than they will poor people who commit the same exact crime. They were like, well, that rich guy is part of the community and he has a family. And then the poor guy, they'll be like, well, he doesn't have any family. So who's going to miss him if he's locked up? I mean, that, that's how they look at things in the, in the legal system. So, of course, they're going to look at that in basketball. I mean, heck, in the legal system, you'll have some of those, those rich dudes say, oh, I need to file a motion for pickleball courts. I need to be sure to have pickleball courts at my minimum security prison because I've really picked up pickleball and it helps my hip. And I don't want to have an artificial hip. So I need pickleball. Motion, motion for pickleball, your honor. <laughs> motion for pickleball. That's exactly I mean- what will happen. How many people are in prison for welfare for all, but Brett Favre is out here walking around just, you know, whatever, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. Well, how many people are in, in there for welfare fraud, in jail for welfare fraud, and Zach Eady's just knocking the hell out of anybody he feels like, huh? How about that? <laughs> uh, show represented by Banks and Jones. I mean, he's just walking down, punching people. Uh Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney, played away in banksandjones.com. Why Banks and Jones? Other lawyers say they'll go to trial. They won't. They'll settle and settle for less. Banks and Jones is ready to go to trial for you. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney. Why settle? Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones, banksandjones.com. By the way, guys, on those uh, spas, those dynasty pools and spas, the spas, I got to stop by and take a look at them over the weekend because I had to make a road trip. And they're gorgeous. The showrooms in Athens will deliver within 125 miles. So that means they deliver to you in Knoxville or Chattanooga. And they've got the best chemicals. That means no fillers, more of the good stuff. And it's all made right here in East Tennessee. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Mention Off the Hook Sports. Get $500 off again. Delivering without 125 miles of that showroom in Athens. Hang tight because coming up, this, this discussion has to be had. Why Rick Barnes is equipped to have long-term success and he's about to turn 70. I don't know what Caleb's thinking, but we'll put him on the spot next with four downs and it'll be brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Just imagine having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. What about that? Dynasty Pools and Spas, their showroom is open in Athens right off the interstate. You can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market. And then delivery, yes, they can do that. It's Knoxville or Chattanooga. They've got complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best. They also have pool chemicals as well. Dynasty pools and spas, amazing discounts for first responders, military, and even some blemish models. It can save you a ton and no one will ever notice. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Go to DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com or stop by that showroom in Athens. DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Welcome to Ray Varner Ford in Clinton, where every turn meets new possibilities and every mile celebrates cutting-edge innovation. Elevate your journey with our pre-owned selection of quality vehicles 
2021 Ford Mustang 5.0 GT, 33540. 2021 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali 4x4, 46980. 2022 Ford Expedition King Ranch 4x4, 67550. Local you trust, pre-owned vehicles you can afford. Rayvorn Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers, featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, Tennessee Vol collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co., what's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, I got you. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. Will do, and I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStar Hats Co. is a trademark of TriStar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. Joe Newbert Collision Center. by Dynasty Spas, the most comfortable spas made in the United States of America, right here in East Tennessee. Drop in for the all-new showroom in Athens, Dynasty Spas, perfect for all four seasons. Four Downs, presented by Off the Hook Sports. All right, we get to it right now as Cooper Mays will tell us what to do. Coop, what should we do as we hop in the hot tub? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Oh, good job. All right, Coop, I appreciate that. And let's go ahead and dive into Caleb Calhoun with a column on offthehooksports.com. How Rick Barnes is poised for long-term success, even though he'll be 70 this summer. I'm just going to challenge Caleb and see what he's got. First down. Give me a reason, Caleb. Coop here. First down. Go. So... Rick Barnes is equipped for long-term success because of the changes to college basketball that have happened in the NIL era. What changes, say, sir? The changes are, well, not just NIL, but transfer portal. The transfer portal combined with the NIL is going to lead to a lot of players like Dalton Connect, a lot more Dalton Connects who play very well at the smaller level, will have one more year of eligibility, and in that final year, will look for a school or a program that will develop them to give them a shot at the NBA. Rick Barnes, his his strength, his forte is developing players and coaching experienced talent. He doesn't do well with one and dones as freshmen because he has a philosophy, he tries to develop them on principle and it just doesn't mix well with what he's, with, with what their overall objective is. Because Dave, as you know, one and dones are using college as a pit stop for the NBA period in the story. And they don't really care how they're developed. They, they're they mad that they have to go to college in the first place. So Rick Barnes is going to start focusing on getting experienced guys at other places via the transfer portal to come play for him. And they will thrive under Rick Barnes because they're going to Rick Barnes specifically because they want to develop their game for no okay. other reason. I'm going to play devil's advocate on these four downs for all four that you have. Okay. I'm going to say no way, Caleb, you're absolutely wrong because Dalton connect was one in a million. He wanted to be coached hard. He wanted the structure of a Rick Barnes type of program most kids don't want that they'll go somewhere else and they'll want to play with the best players so while we see one and done being phased out i believe that you could see the transfer portal become the new one and done and that is teams with big nil money matter of fact 
someone told me from Kentucky that that's what John Calipari has planned is to put together with, with the, the money that he's able to get from Nike in a roundabout way before he's going to try to funnel that into some transfer players. So I, I don't think Rick Barnes is the top of coach. I will leave it at this. I don't think Rick Barnes is the top of coach that most, most transfers would want to play for. What down, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. All right, give me another reason. Long-term success, Rick Barnes. One, um, the next one is NIL. Tennessee has the best NIL collective in college basketball. So when they go after these transfers, they're going to be in the running for the best of the best constantly. And they're going to be able to consistently get be in the running for these type of transfers I'm talking about. These four-year guys, Don't Connect is not one in a million. I'm breaking from you on that. I think there's a lot of guys that see an NBA uh, career in themselves who are career college players, and they just think, if I just get this one extra year, I can do something special. So I think NIL is going to allow Rick Barnes to compete for the best players, bar none. Did you ever hear the story about how – Shaquille O'Neal moved to an area and his credit card got a fraud put on it because he spent $100,000 at Walmart. You ever heard that story in a night? Never heard that one before. Okay, it's, it's true. I think it happened in uh, Alcoa, actually, just south of uh, Knoxville. So, um, but the story is true. What you were saying is absolutely correct because this is not, when Tennessee, with their NIL money, they walk into a transfer portal house of football let's say and instead of house of sports you better bring out the big checkbook you better have a haslam with you right you walk in basically a walmart where you can afford everything in basketball with tennessee's nil money they can they don't just have to get one guy they can get two transfer portal guys now then you worry about chemistry and there are whole kinds of other issues but i wouldn't be surprised if you see at some point a season in which uh, a school has two or three key, key starter transfer portals uh, players in the future. What down, Coop? Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. All right, brother. Give me another reason. It, Bar- it ties into the Bar- NIL. but it, Success at Tennessee because. It ties back into NIL, but it's going to be another reason for it, which is Josiah James and Santiago Pascal became back this year. That's not ending. There's going to be a lot of players who would be second round late draft picks in the NBA that are now going to come back for another year. And Rick Barnes is going to absolutely work on that and try to keep them in. I think of a Jonas Adu. I We just talked about him. I've, I've lit into him, but Jonas Adu has raw NBA potential. So he would actually test the NBA waters or the pro waters. Even if it's not NBA, he might go overseas or something like that. He's coming back to Tennessee and they're going to get the NIL money to do it. If Zakai Ziegler were testing the waters, the NIL money is going to bring it back. Nobody does better with returning players than Rick Barnes. Nobody in college basketball does better with returning talent than Rick Barnes. He develops players like nobody's business. And so you're going to consistently see more experienced teams at Tennessee because of that. I got zero argument for that one. I think that's a really good one. You keep the mid-level players that are not going to be lottery picks. I mean, you couldn't keep connect even if he had another year, but you could keep, almost everybody else on the team, I, I would think, um, it, even if they had a little bit of NBA interest. That's good stuff. His fourth down is his best. We we went over it on a 3.45 a.m. production meeting. It's fantastic. And I remind you that four downs, and today we discuss why Rick Barnes will have long-term success at Tennessee, is brought to you by our good friends at Dynasty Pools and Spas. Within, the, within 125 miles, they deliver – Everything you need, including the cover, the cover lift, steps, and everything. Again, within 125 miles, that's Dynasty Pools and Spas. And with their chemicals, it's local and it's not filler. It's great products. That fourth down coming up, why Rick Barnes will have immense success. Caleb's calling for four national championships, 18 final fours at Tennessee right after this. Just imagine. Having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. What about that? Dynasty Pools and Spas. Their showroom is open in Athens right off the interstate. 
You can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market. And then delivery? Yes, they can do that. That's Knoxville or Chattanooga. They've got complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best. They also have pool chemicals as well. Dynasty pools and spas, amazing discounts for first responders, military, and even some blemish models that can save you a ton and no one will ever notice. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Go to DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com or stop by that showroom in Athens. DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. Dynasty Pools and Spas. What is your fourth and strongest reason why Rick Barnes will have long-term continued success at Tennessee? Rick Barnes is not as stubborn as we all thought. I mean, Rick Barnes overnight changed his philosophy to adapt to the team he had this year with Dalton Connect. We never thought Rick Barnes was that type of coach. Rick Barnes exercised load management at the end of the season, which is a big reason Tennessee made the sweet the Elite Eight to begin with, because he absolutely tanked the SEC tournament, which kept them fresh. So Rick Barnes, we thought he was hard-nosed, old school, stuck on principle the whole time. No, he doesn't. He he can change his philosophy based on the talent he has and the way he and 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 the team he has and the personnel he has. And very rare for a 69 year old coach to do that. And and he's in look, look at Rick Barnes. He's young. He's 69 going on 55. So yeah, I mean, I think he could coach into his 80s. Does he look younger than me? In all honesty, if you met us two in the same room. I wouldn't say he looks younger than you, Dave. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> Apex Apparel, oh. they are awesome. Look, they did my uh, TriStar Hats Company shirt. You can see that right there. I'll tell you more about TriStar Hats as we go on. We have this day in Tennessee sports history coming up, and it's brought to you by our friends at Apex Apparel. Not just clothes, design, brand, market, your way, unique products to promote your business with unparalleled customer service. A full on-brand supply company called Tyler, 865-919-3001. 865-919-3001 or go to your Apex Apparel right below for a free quote. And again, 15% off. Tell them the Off the Hook Sports sent you. So uh, this day in uh, Tennessee sports history, uh, Caleb Calhoun, uh, we got any cracking today as far as monumental news. I imagine it might have something to do with the NCAA tournament uh, coming up. So we'll be sure and uh, get to that as uh, Tennessee again loses to Purdue. And I know you're very disappointed, but still a special season. I think what makes it tougher for Tennessee fans is the fact that Alabama <sighs> makes the final four. And a guy that I'm not particularly fond of and Nate Oates because of the way he's carried himself at times. So Tennessee is knocking at the door. They have been. So has Alabama. Now they're in the final four. Tennessee or Alabama, which is more likely to become the premier basketball school within the SEC? Let me ask you that question right now, Caleb Calhoun, and I'll tell you who I think it is, and I, we may differ. Let's say you. I think it's Alabama. I think it's Alabama, even though everything I just said about Rick Barnes um, and his, him being uniquely positioned for the future, I think Rick, Alabama is uniquely positioned – because Nate Oates is younger. And part of me feels like Nate Oates is not going anywhere. And so I think, I think it's Alabama. Okay. You just laid out my two reasons. Uh, one, everything you said in four downs about Rick Barnes. I think somehow, some way, glory days, his glory days could be ahead. I don't want to call it a renaissance because he only made the Final Four one time. But I think his best days could be ahead. So I'm taking that one from you. And Nate Oates just feels like a guy to me that is using Alabama to get a job at a blue blood. I could be dead wrong on that. I thought it about John Calipari, and he actually stayed at Memphis longer than I thought he would. I thought it about some other guys, and there are some guys that just are using football athletic departments to elevate themselves to blue blood college worthy coaches. And I don't know why, but I just feel like Nate Oates is that guy. Well, by the way, the reason John Calipari stayed longer than you thought he would is because John Calipari didn't have much success at Memphis his first five years there. 
So he wasn't that much of a hot coaching commodity for the Blue Bloods during that time. Um, it wasn't until the last four years that he really took off. Even if that happens, that makes a stronger case because here's Greg Byrne, the athletic director at Alabama, is one of the better ones in college sports. I mean, Danny White's the best, I think, but Greg Byrne's really good. I think Greg Byrne will have an easy time finding another head coach to replace Nate Oates. And I think that the money, while stronger at Tennessee, I think there's just certain things that favor Alabama. They look, they have brought in a lot of money from the Saban years, and they have a lot of money to spend on buying coaches right now. They do. And they, they've got more students than a lot of third third world countries. Um, and let me ask you this when it comes to football, is NATO's helped by the fact that football is not this huge behemoth that's out there and Nick Saban gets to take pot shots at the basketball coach whenever he feels like it, which he has done. And so Caleb is, is NATO's job easier because football is not dominant or is it harder? I'll tell you what, what you, easier because while you think about that, let me remind people that uh, portions of the program brought to you by our good friend at uh, state farm, Don self. Customer service still matters. For over 40 years, they built their business on taking care of their customers. The greater Chattanooga area, call 423-396-2126, just below 423-396-2126, or go to donself.net, donself.net. So is NATO helped by the fact that his football program is probably going to be good, but probably not going to be elite and dominant and snag all the headlines and have all the decision-making power in an athletic department that one would expect about that type of dominant program in the SEC. So is he better off without a dominant program, dominant football program? Probably, but the thing that really helps Nate Oates is Alabama showed they were willing to risk everything for him when they were a dominant football program. I mean, last year, the Brandon Miller incident. And explain all that for those that aren't big basketball fans, the whole gun charge issue. Because I thought at the time that, the entire program should have been suspended until they got to the bottom of it. So Brandon Miller, their five-star talent last year had allegedly handed the weapon to a player who then went and allegedly killed a mother. Um, It was a bad situation. We don't know Brandon Miller's involvement. I do think, look, I'm going to say it and people can hate on me on this, but I do think Brandon Miller didn't, I don't think Brandon Miller gave the gun thinking it was going to be used for murder. I'm just going to be honest with you, Dave. I don't think that Brandon Miller thought that. Well, no, but my point is with that situation involving two players and your star player, it's time to take a quick break and make sure everything's copacetic. Yes. When all that broke, Nick Saban came out and said, there's no wrong place, wrong time. Right. And which is what Nick Oates said just a week earlier. That it was wrong place, wrong time. Yes. And the truth of the matter is Alabama still stuck fully behind Nate Oates. I think contradicting what the empire of Alabama was at the time, Nate, Nick Saban. And so if that's the case, they're more willing to stick by him now in the future. I think Alabama is going to, I think they are, they made that very clear. Look, had Bruce Pearl done what he did to Tennessee, had he done it at Alabama, he'd stay the coach at Alabama because they would have probably fought like hell for it. Now, you can say whether or not that's right or wrong, but I, I think that Uh-oh. Alabama well, says you, we are going down with our ship. I'll give you another reason. He would have survived his fiasco at Tennessee had he had a Final Four in his back pocket. That changes the way you're viewed. He would have survived it at Tennessee. Had he already taken Tennessee to a Final Four, he would have survived it then. And now Oates has that Final Four in his back pocket. Is he essentially unfireable? Which if I'm his agent, I love to hear. Because I I still believe his agent's looking for... I think I really believe the Oates camp wanted the Kentucky job to come up. Oh, I, I think you're probably right. They probably did. Um... And it's, but, but also he, Oates would want a pay raise to go to Kentucky and is Kentucky going to give much of a pay raise to a new head coach if John Calipari leaves? Cause I mean, we're talking about a guy they got to pay $33 million to. So, and by the way, no matter when Calipari retires, they have to pay him $33 million. So, okay, so we're discussing Alabama or Tennessee, which uh, can be the b- basketball power in the conference. If it shifts from Kentucky, when we talk about, 
Tennessee and Rick Barnes, you like his chances for long-term success. So I'm going to make you athletic director, Caleb Calhoun. What kind of contract are you giving him? What kind of extension are you giving him? The Rick Barnes extension? Yes. Now okay, let's, 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 let's be fair. Let's, let's be fair. Uh, the numbers of any, of any extension or any contract are all about the buyout. I could give Caleb a, a 25 year contract and my buyout on my end is $25. And what's Caleb got? He's got a big sack of nothing. Okay. So the number matters. So we're going to assume that the years are going to be paid. Okay. We're not going to say there's some sneaky way that don't be surprised if you see this happen on the ladies side of Kelly Harper, that we're going to assume those years are going to be paid. So you have a choice. You give him no contract extension, so he sits at four years, I believe. You might want to double-check me on that. He sits at four years, which you don't like to tell recruits because they like to think that they're going to – your coach is going to be there for five years. And it does send a sign that you could be close to retiring. You give him just another contract, which is a year extension, no raise, or you give him a big whopping raise. We might want to make this the poll question or the last option, lifetime contract. He's done as much or more at Tennessee as anybody has. Lifetime contract. That's what I'm giving him. I'm not giving him a lifetime contract. I got your point because we talked about this last week. Um, I'm not giving him a lifetime contract. I'm keeping it standard at this point. I mean, Rick Barnes is already, I mean. So you're just lopping on another year, probably a 15, 20% raise. Yeah. He right now makes 5.7 million. You know what I would do? Bruce Pearl makes 5.716 million. I would up Rick Barnes's contract to make more than Bruce Pearl. So maybe up at 5.8, 5.9. He's still behind Bill Self, John Calipari, and Tom Izzo. And then he'd be fourth. And I had extended through 2028, 20, 29. Since so it's 2027, 20, 28. And I am a believer that you always stick around for five years. So you always do five year contracts. Caleb, there's like a. You're like a double yellow line. You're right down the middle. Go all in. Go all in and tell him you're the guy. You're here forever building something special. Because you don't think that kids' families are going to be worried that the guy's about to turn 70? This way you tell yourself, you tell the fan base he's in incredible shape. He's doing fantastic. He wants to coach forever. He's managed to get his wife living in Texas so he doesn't have to deal with a wife anymore. So, Caleb... Everything's set for him. Lifetime contract. Forge his birth certificate. He looks 55 as it is. Just forge his birth certificate and tell everybody he's 55, okay? Who would lifetime, disagree with it? Lifetime pro, lifetime contract. You got to do it. Quality Tire Pro, the Eberly family has been serving Chattanooga since 1957. All major brands of tires, full service, automotive, brake alignments, oil changes, and more. All work covered by a nationwide warranty. They're on Cherokee Boulevard in downtown Chattanooga. Stop by and say, hey, it's Off the Oak Sports. Hey, Bo. Off the Oak Sports. Hey, Bo. Uh, quality Tire Pro. Again, Quality Tire Pro. That is uh, right there on Cherokee Boulevard downtown. Now, I said all that. I'm going to protect myself on the back end, Caleb, to make sure I'm not giving him too much if I give him a lifetime contract, right? So you're going to give him like, you're going to try to cheap out on this. Yeah. You know, okay. Just, okay. Yeah. yeah like his just last, say it's lifetime. Like his last buy out of like two dollars. Yeah. Like his last ten years when he's ninety, he basically gets the same he'd get from Social Security. It's about the same, which is nothing. Which is going to be well, none for me and Caleb. I typically caution on lifetime contracts because it, you always question. Because look, I think coaches specifically more than other people get to you they get too big for their britches a lot of times and they become very arrogant and think very highly of themselves and become lazy <coughs> Joe Paterno um but I do think that again there are some altruistic coaches in the sport I think Nick Saban was as committed as he could possibly be the entire time he was head coach and he had a, basically a lifetime contract at Alabama I think Rick Barnes would be as committed as he could possibly be the as long as he was a head coach John Calipari yeah, he'll go with the win. You know what I mean? It's like John Calipari's not going to be as committed as he could possibly be if he doesn't feel like it anymore. But Rick Barnes would. Nick Saban was. Um, I don't think Rick Barnes would ever think he's holier than everybody else around him. Do you? No, even though he probably is. Another note on Rick Barnes that I think is is worth discussing is when 
you talk about all the NIL advantages that he has and all the recruiting advantages that he has. You're right on all of those, Caleb. But my question is, when he actually sits down, you look a little bit older on television, uh, on in, in the living room than you do on television. When he sits down in the living room, do you think his age is a factor? Because I can tell you, as a father of a college-age son, Nick Saban in his past couple of years would have been a factor because somebody's got to retire sometime, right? And it would right. be a factor. It would be a factor with Rick Barnes. Seventy sounds different, much different than being in your sixties. It does. It does. But again, I we just uh, I just read a story on this yesterday, Dave, where. Uh, the wealth transfer from the boomer generation to the younger generations to their kids is probably not going to happen because they're living so shockingly long that they're just going to run through all of their wealth and like healthcare costs and things like that. <laughs> and basically people are living a lot longer, particularly that generation of which Rick Barnes is a part of. And also Rick Barnes has money. So you can afford to live a lot longer when you have money. And so 70 for Rick Barnes really is 55 for what, what we used to think 55 was. And I, I mean, it's it's 70 for Rick Barnes. Put it this way. It ain't 70 for Bear Bryant, who I don't even think made it to 70. OK, I could be wrong on that, but uh, not sober. I right, SEC football <laughs> on the message board said, I'm tired of him sitting on the bench the whole game. That's all Rick does. Bruce is all is up all game energetic. This to me is that Philip Fulmer clap thing. Remember the Philip? You don't like him when he's yeah. not winning right 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 you hate it when he's clapping and they're losing you're, i mean if if tennessee's winning if they beat purdue we're saying today look how calm cool and collected rick barnes was just sitting on the bench manipulating things like the godfather right yeah exactly and by the way nobody said this about coach k who always set the bench and who was always calm and collected right never got animated and won five <laughs> national what? titles if you ever happen to find yourself on media row next to coach k you might want to throw in some some uh ear, ear what do they call them here when you so you can't hear earplugs ear, yeah. earplugs yeah that guy can make a sailor blush with the way he curses wow strong the way, he takes it to another level coach you may think he's a little bit holier than now coach k um, that's one. Oh yeah he was yes 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So Rick Barnes is the real deal. That's got to factor into your decision as well for long-term success, Caleb. I mean, we could we could sit here and talk about how long one coach is going to coach at another place, but I know the UCLA flirtation was there. I thought that was kind of a last uh, opportunity for Barnes to go to a bigger, better job, and that's debatable. And he seems really happy at Tennessee. He's not going to be heard cursing. He's just a known commodity. So being a known commodity in recruiting helps you. It does. It does. And also what he's known for, and this is, he's known for developing talent. Hey, if you're a guy that like, you just need one other aspect of your game to improve so you can be a top NBA draft pick, why wouldn't you pick Rick Barnes? And then the NIL money's there for you. Sure. Um, now Chad says, and I'm going to get to SEC football, flat out asked, do, do we want Rick Barnes gone? Um, I know some people may may want that. Chad said even the press room question about officiating. Uh, so only Caleb and Purdue think it was not a big deal that close of a game and the ball is in double bonus and Purdue has two fouls with 10 minutes left. All right. You want to answer Tennessee fouled that? more than Purdue yesterday. Tennessee fouled more than Purdue. There, simple. Yeah. Like, SEC guys football. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I thought they did too. SC, not maybe to that extent. SEC football, do you guys want Rick gone? We all have opinions. No. Matter of fact, I think that would be the worst thing you could possibly do. I agree. You're Rick Barnes, you're on the precipice of, like, you know, they say the 70s are your golden years sometimes. Maybe Rick Barnes is about to have some golden years in his 70s. I'm telling you, that's possible. So watch out. Yeah, just look at Blanche. <laughs> from the golden girls yeah i knew who you were referring to <laughs> yeah those can be your years he can be out there loving every minute of it all right hang tight two minutes and then uh, dalton connect where does he stand in the all-time folklore of tennessee also a 
spring midway practice report. The balls will be back on the practice field on Monday after a couple weeks. They got two weeks left. We're halfway through spring camp, guys. It's April. Stay tuned. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. If we wouldn't put our family in it, we're not going to put their family in it. If you're going to say that you're doing the best work in Knoxville, now saying it's one thing, producing it and providing it's another. The largest family-owned collision center in Knoxville is Joe Newbert Collision Center. Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. There's your pair. How's it going, guys? This is John Claybo with Tennessee Homemade Wine and Tennessee Cider Company. And I could hardly sleep last night. I'm so fired up to tell you guys about the club. No longer do you have to order just wine. Now you can get your favorite hard ciders and your favorite homemade wines shipped right to your front door once every quarter. Whether it's two, four, six, or 12 bottles of either or, maybe some of both, get excited, get fired up, join the club today. Twenty twenty one Ford Mustang 5.0 GT 33540. Twenty twenty one GMC Sierra 1500 Denali 4x4 46980. Twenty twenty two Ford Expedition King Ranch 4x4 67550. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Warren asking you to like, subscribe, and share. Dave needs this. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones. Tennessee's trial attorney. Speech. Play to win. Thanksjones.com. Um, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show. Ooh. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave uh. Hooker. How did you do that to me, message board? What are you doing to me? I was ready to come back with like a... a a great segment to get this thing rolling, tease it forward to all the things that nobody teaches us in college, basically. You just have to learn yourself. And then you got me laughing on the message board. Um, SEC football started with you guys want Rick gone and we all have opinions. We shared ours. I don't think anybody agrees with him. And SEC football responds, I'm just drunk and upset, fellas. <laughs> It's been since Friday, and SEC football still going at it. Well, if it hurts that bad, I say kudos to you. Go for it. I've I've got no problem with that. If it, if it hurts that bad, what? There are some games that alcohol is just the only answer. And then Travis making me laugh too during the break. He said I was dropping a Blanche Golden Girls reference on a bunch of millennials. You'd be surprised, by the way, if you're a business owner, we can help you. You'd be surprised. Our analytics go much older. Uh, than you would think. And those are people that own businesses. So there you go. If you want to be a part of that, you can go to Dave at offthehooksports.com. Just email me. I'll take care of you. Dave at offthehooksports.com. Your chance to be heard by thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people. All right, Caleb, this day in Tennessee sports history, what do you got before we get into Dalton Connect and some spring football? 16 years ago today, uh, Tennessee led by Candace Parker. The Lady Vols beat Texas A&M in the Elite Eight to reach the Final Four. It's the last Final Four the program has ever reached. They have not made one since then. And they ended up winning the national title that year. They beat Texas A&M 53 to 45. And I just want to bring that up because I predicted last week that Kelly Harper would, would lose her job today. It is after 11. 
Eastern time on April the 1st. It's not expensive. And Danny White has not made an announcement yet. So and the, the, the number, let me make sure I got the number right. But the number goes down down on april the first or i thought it was after april the first no it's after march 31st the number has officially okay. gone down so it is the buyout down. is what because a lot of people don't know what you're talking about people don't listen the buyout to is you have you are on the hook for five years five hundred and fifty thousand. if you fire her today you would been on the hook for four years a million 1.1 million if you fired her yesterday um a lot less money you <laughs> save like 1.7 million dollars i'm sorry why is she still employed? This day in Tennessee sports history, yesterday, the Vols owed Kelly Harper a lot more in a potential buyout, whereas today they owe less. So Caleb says, I mean, it, it's, 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 get fired. it's, it's so hold funny. on, hold on. TriStar Hats brings you this day in Tennessee sports history. Look over my shoulder. This TriStar hat is fantastic. It is so nice. And uh, the trucker caps are incredible. They've got them all. TriStar Hats Co. Again, TriStarHatsCo.com. Use the promo code HOOKED. Uh, that's HOOKED. And get free shipping on that. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. TriStar Hats Co. So, and you, you bring out the pitchforks and all that. And you were trying to do what with Kelly Harper? It's just, it's 16 years. Guys, that was the last time they won an Elite Eight game to reach the Final Four. 16 years ago today and kelly harper is in her sixth year as a matter of fact if i'm doing my math right I, and i'm just I'm just trying to do this right right real quick uh three four five six seven eight nine oh one two okay no she needs two more years to have had as long of alicia as holly warlick had but at what point do you pull the trigger guys like now i i mean i told john adams last week to be patient i'm gonna owe him a big apology i i i really did not think they were gonna stick with kelly harper uh, you know what I think? And I was thinking about this driving in the studio. I think they care what, uh, they care about what sport most. Football. Okay. What's second? That men's basketball. What's third? You're right. I'm wrong. And I know where you're going. I would have said women's <laughs> basketball. It's baseball. They care about baseball more than women's basketball. Now he cares. I mean, Danny White's a numbers guy. That's what I'm getting. But I, I didn't think, like, he has an appreciation for Tennessee athletics history. I'm not going to throw any aspersions yet. Maybe he will make them. What time do usually you get the letter of someone fired? I always thought it was, like, right around 11 in the morning, right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know when it'll be. I, I haven't tracked the letters before. Um, I guess When does the be. announcement come? We don't think. How about this? Good. When you cover the former firing, at what time of day did? Well, you knew beforehand, but what time of day did the official announcement come back? You knew he was fired before the South Carolina game, right? And, but I'm. I, mean, I knew a month. <laughs> I yes, knew, you knew a month. Before. I knew a long time before everybody else knew. Let's just. But when out. did the announcement come that day? Was it like eleven in the morning? I'm trying to remember. Was it noon, one, something like? I'm trying to remember the exact time. I just feel like eleven in the morning. A press is Press conference, the or that they would send out. We're having a big press conference. The they would send out. We're having a big press conference when the news get public that he was fired. I thought it was like roughly eleven in the morning before the press conference. Yeah, I could see that. Um, speaking it's of eleven some, uh, fourteen, it's it's eleven fourteen. So you're keeping track of. So as I do this uh, show, yes. Yeah. By the way, so uh, somebody asked me uh, how many days till football. I can do that right now. Uh, Siri. How many days until August the 31st? It's 152 days until football season, so let's talk some football right now. As Tennessee midway through spring camp, this spring camp midway report is brought to you by our friend Ray Varner. Local, you can trust innovation. You can afford Ray Varner, Ford.com. Ray Varner, Ford.com. And... Caleb, midway, what do you feel like you've learned about this basketball, excuse me, football team? And you can check it out on offthehooksports.com as Josh Ward was nice enough to do a write-up for us. Um, this football team, I think that the offensive line, what I know now that I thought or wasn't 100% sure of, I think this offensive line will be very, very good in the fall. Okay, that's a good one. I, I could see that with the offensive line. What stands out to me is Tennessee has some – 
Tennessee, uh, is Josh Eibel's really leaning towards his highly touted freshmen to immediately step up and be stars. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he has a big belief in it. He called out Mike Matthews and Boo Carter last week in a good way, specifically shouted them out. But more importantly, on top of that, given the running back issues with Cam Seldon now, Jalen Wright and Jabari Small gone, I think Peyton Lewis, when he arrives in the summer, is going to become immediately the starting running back, quite honestly. So I think Josh Hyper is going to – what I'm getting is he's going to rely a lot on freshmen. Yeah, and running back depth is a bit of a question, but really running back depth – Josh writes this in his his column. Running back depth is always a question in spring camp because you don't want to get your good guys hurt. So the guys that need to get out there and play are the Cam Seldon. And he can't play anymore because of a shoulder injury. Him missing that two and a half weeks of practice is really going to hurt him in the fall. If Dylan Sampson missed two and a half weeks of practice, he'd be just fine in the fall. So running back uh, depth is a position is is a question for the upcoming fall, and the Selden injury doesn't help that. Tennessee's uh, football team, uh, their defensive line has a high ceiling. Totally agree with that with Josh. I think it has an incredibly high ceiling. I was talking with a, an NFL scout about could it be the best, as Tim Banks, Tennessee's defensive coordinator, said in the SEC. And he had to think about it, and he said, I don't want to speculate right now, but – Caleb, simply the fact that he didn't say, whoa, you're crazy, I thought was a pretty good sign for Tennessee's defensive front. Yeah, I agree. I think Tim Banks is – look, Tim Banks is asked – he has a very difficult job. I mean, it's not a desirable job. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's – it is – like, if there's such – thing, like, everyone says, like, what is it? What's the most thankless position on a football team? Is it – is it the left guard? Is it the guards? They're the most thankless positions on a football team, right? The offensive guards. No, it's the holder. Because I bet you don't even know who the holder was last year. Yeah, but the holder is not as valuable. The holder is so replaceable. If he drops one. No, if he drops one. Okay. Yes, maybe the whole. I still. I think on a on 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 the offense or defensive sides. I think it's the guards. Like Tim Banks is basically the equivalent of a guard. So Tony, this is something I'm gonna write. (laughs) So. Does Tennessee go into the transfer portal for a running back? I usually hate the spring transfer portal because I don't think you get an immediate impact there. I love it in this regard. Go get a running back in the transfer portal. I get. I think that's a very, very good move. But you like Peyton Lewis so much, you kind of, you kind of didn't think so much of my idea over the weekend. Well, because of because of Tennessee's lawsuit that has put everything on hold against the NCAA, the spring transfer portal is about to be very different now, and I want to tell you guys why. It's not going to be camp. different the next few weeks, no. is it? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, because the NCAA has can't do this anymore, which they had been. You can tamper. So the reason we didn't like spring transfer portal running backs or players in the past is because if they transferred in the spring, well, that was because they couldn't play where they are at. Now, you could go to players who are planning to stay where they're at and just target them and say, hey, why don't you just transfer and come to my school because we can give you more money. And Wait, now, I haven't seen this in – printed form how is this proposed or how does this possibly work because it sounds crazy to me that you could call bob who just finished his practice at alabama and say i'm with georgia would you like to come play football for me and what are you guys working on today that seems strange every bit of the ncaa regulations on the nil were struck down by the court in that tennessee lawsuit because the judge basically said they're going to lose this case any regulations they have limits a player's ability to make money so right now, tampering is legal in the sport because the NCAA literally is not allowed to regulate it. Courts won't let them. So you can just tamper. Why you are they not tamper. tampering now? Oh, you don't think they are? It's just the transfer portal hasn't opened yet. I guarantee you when the transfer portal opens, you're going to see much more. You're going to see many more quality players enter the portal after spring this year than you saw last year. They're tampering. I'll tell you that right now. I don't. I don't have any inside. Well, they were on anyway. That, guys. I mean, that, that the yeah. lawsuit didn't change it. They were anyway. Well, okay, but there's a. This is what people say all the time. Like, you know, if they're breaking the law anyway, then not, you know, making it legal is not going to change, or making it um, illegal is not going to change anything. I'm like, well, no. People will break it more brazenly. This is like anything. Okay, let's talk about like 
legalizing weed. The argument is like, oh, people will smoke it anyway. Yeah, and that's fine. But like, if you legalize it, more people are going to smoke it. Okay, so it's it's the same with like tampering. Yes, you it, it, paying players. Yes, they were already paying players before NIL, but that doesn't mean they're paying them near. They were paying them nearly to the level they're paying them now. The okay, rules so did curb it. So let me ask you this then: Why are they not calling Quinchon Judkins right now? The Ole Miss running back. Yes. I mean, they I mean, might why, be, he's but... transferred to Ohio State. He's clearly a bag man. He's about the money because he, he he went to Ohio State. So you can buy him for a price. And that's the type of guy right there. You call with the right number. You're going to get him. You don't have to sell him on the facilities and all that stuff. And the tradition, mm -hmm. he doesn't care about General Nealon. He cares about whoever's on his, on his paycheck. I mean, he's worried they, about. They, they, they... Go ahead. Sorry. How do you know they haven't called him? I don't, but I'm saying calling. They might have. Now, um, there's there's a rule from transferring from one SEC school to another in the spring period, but maybe this rule is defunct now, too, that you couldn't transfer from school to school in within the conference. So can you not do that either? Or is oh, that no, even no, a no, rule that anybody has to pay attention to? I don't think that's to? a rule. I don't think there's any transfer portal rule possible. I think it's just all out no, like they are. Okay, so you're saying moving forward. I know it was a rule a month ago. That in the yes. spring period, you yes. couldn't transfer from school to school within the conference. Right, right. You've been trans... You, um, I don't, I think but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's like it's like when you have a car totaled. I mean, you don't go out and pull the muffler off of it and say, oh, I got a great muffler. Terrible analogy newbrook collision center for nearly 50 years newbrook collision center has east tennessee's best choice for quality repair work including mufflers and fantastic customer service joe newbrook collision joe newbrook collision.com newbrook collision center remember them uh if if your uh kids for instance maybe over the weekend was involved in a little fender bender that's a uh, newbrook collision center again Newber Collision Center. So why? I mean, why are there not rules? I mean, what? Because any because basically the, the lawsuit basically said it's an antitrust violation to have any regulations that would limit somebody's ability to maximize their revenue. Well, banning banning tampering limits their ability to maximize their revenue. Okay. Honestly. All right. Josh Heupel's not going to do this because it's kind of classless. But why doesn't Lane Kiffin hop in the car or hop on a plane and show up with a couple of hostesses on each arm and a big fat check? I'm talking about one that looks like the uh, what's the publisher sweepstakes check. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about he shows up at the door and he goes, Bob Jones, you're the best pass rusher in the entire world of college football. Here is your ten million dollars, and Julian Sissy. So why does he do that during? Why can can he do that if he's got the free time without spring practice going on that he can just go to a school and start actively recruiting these guys? I mean, are, are there literally zero rules? You don't think he's doing that? Well, I I mean <laughs> I know he takes pictures from individual campuses, but I thought that was just for. He takes pictures from like Tennessee's campus, Alabama's campus, on and on and on to show you that he's recruiting there. But Caleb, that was for the the winter period. The spring period should be off limits if you want the good. Depends what you want. Do you want the good of college football? The spring period is off limits, or do you want what's right as an American citizen? And that is go out and do what's best for you and your family. I mean, where do you stand? Um, on that? I mean. Again, uh, you're you're asking, do you want altruism or do you want the money? And this is America, baby. When does America ever put altruism over money? Like, that's that's what people. That's capitalism, is it not? I mean, it's it's capitalism. Okay, there's there's some monstrous competition at two positions. We'll get to fourth down, and that's brought to you by our good friends, Dynasty Pools and Spas. Just imagine having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. What about that? Dynasty Pools and Spas, their showroom is open in Athens right off the interstate. 
you can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market and in delivery yes they can do that's Knoxville or chattanooga they've got complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best they also have pool chemicals as well dynasty pools and spas amazing discounts for first responders military and even some blemish models that can save you a ton and no one will ever notice mention off the hook sports get 500 dollars off mention off the hook sports get 500 dollars off dynasty pools and spas go to dynasty pools and spas.com or stop by that showroom in athens dynasty pools and spas.com dynasty pools and spas bonus for dynasty we weren't doing four downs but that's fine um i still want you to answer this question because the discussion was tennessee's midway spring practice report josh ward wrote on this on uh, our website off the hooksports.com the last thing that he wrote about the topic that i think everybody cares about and is excited about because they touch the football right it's pretty simple serious competition at wide receiver one and then defensive back I go back to what you said about Matthews and Carter. I think that Josh Heupel went into a lot of seasons, and I call this the season of fiscal year, so to speak, having a pretty good idea of who's going to play where at receiver because he didn't want to get want his quarterback to look bad, which that, that could still happen. A receiver could run the wrong route, and it looks like an errant throw. And that defensive back, I think he felt like he, he had somewhat of a good feel, but he almost didn't care because he knew all of them weren't that good. But this ties back to your youth movement. I think you're going to see youth in the defensive backfield, and I think you're going to see uh, some youth at receiver as well. I don't know that Tennessee is going to up and rotate their receivers because they haven't to this point, but I'm not ruling it out either. Yeah, I I don't think they will. I think Hypo just wants Matthews to work out well. You know, we had Heath Schuler on last week to talk about uh, the you know how the receivers have to break down routes and react to the way the defense plays, which that's really very much a um, I feel like the Patriots really took started that, didn't they? Or I mean, I guess Spurrier did too, but the Patriots are really big on like you know react Charlie Rice react to what the defense does. Do you think it's easier to pick up the offense in Josh Heupel's system as a quarterback than it is a receiver? I feel like it is. Uh, well, no, I think it's the same. I think you're reading one guy. I think you're reading the safety. I think it's, I, I, I don't think that there's a big difference there. And if you make the wrong read off of safety's keys, then you're going to be absolutely in, you're going to be in a, in a bad shape. Um, and I think Nico's going to have a couple of balls this year where people are going to scratch their head and say, whoa, what happened there? He's as errant as Joe Milton. But no, the receiver ran the wrong route. Uh, I think you're going to see that happen a couple of times. Not a lot, because Tennessee has some upperclassmen receivers. They don't have to go the Matthews route. Caleb and I just both think they will. And it is time for What the H? And it's brought to you by our good buddy, uh, AST Scott Jones at Banks and Jones. Talking some hoops now. What the H? What the? What was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. K -k 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 keep cool. A presentation of OffTheHookSports.com. Somebody told me over the weekend that Dalton Connect would be considered legendary no matter what happened in the NCAA tournament. Caleb, it's just one season. How will Dalton Connect be remembered? It's a very special season, but just one season. It is just one season. It may be the greatest single season in the history of the program, though. I mean, it's one season on the level of like, okay, if you're Auburn, I know now this is different. All, he won a national title, but if you're Auburn and you're ranking the greatest Auburn players of all time, don't you put Cam Newton above Bo Jackson? Well, football? you'd have to. I guess you'd have to. I mean, you've got to. I, I know that Bo Jackson was there for four years, but. Cam Newton won you a Heisman and a national title. So it is just one season. So this is the converse, the class of people that don't connect in the conversation with them. I want to name them. There are five players, Dave, whose jerseys numbers are retired at Tennessee. Bernard King, Ernie Grunfeld, Dale Ellis, Alan Houston, and Chris Lofton. Grant Williams is going to have his jersey number retired in the near future. I can tell you that right now. He's going to have come back and have his number retired at some point at Tennessee. And 
I think those six players really stand out the most. The only way they might not retire Grant Williams numbers because he left early for the NBA, but I think that'd be a stupid reason, quite honestly, for basketball. So those are the big six. Is Don't Connect there's in that conversation? Other, there's just one hmm? other reason. Just one other reason. What's that? I don't know. I think he's rubbed some people the wrong way at the athletic department. I'll just leave it at that. Well, I mean, like. But that's very, know, that's, yeah, that's, that's very enigmatic. You don't think Allen Houston may have rubbed some people the wrong way? Grant Williams ain't Allen Houston. I think he was a better Tennessee player than Allen Houston. Okay, topic for another day. Continue with the Dalton Connect legacy. Okay, so Dalton Connect is an all American. How many times do we say topic for another day? A lot. Go ahead. Dalton Connect was the SEC Player of the Year, an All-American, won the SEC regular season title, took Tennessee to the Elite Eight, accomplished everything. This team with Dalton Connect leading them, Dalton Connect accomplished every single thing you could possibly accomplish that another Tennessee player has accomplished, with the exception of an SEC tournament title. That's like the only thing that he didn't accomplish that somebody else in Tennessee has accomplished. And he did it in one year. So he is, there is, that is seven. That is I the almost thing. take pride in not winning the SEC tournament. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. I was smart enough to get the heck out of that. That is the big seven. And by the way, Dave, I think it's the big six. Because I don't know if Ernie Grunfeld is in the same big six as the other guys we named. I mean, I think that's Bernard King's team, right? That's not Ernie. Gr Ernie Grunfeld's great. But... It's funny you mentioned that. Bert Bertelkamp was discussing those two players on the post game show. And he said they split it pretty evenly. So I'll take his word for it on that. But nevertheless, Bernard King was the better player. I mean, if it came down the last shot, I'm sure that King would get that shot. All right. So I ask you this question. And maybe we put this, can we put this other poll question if you don't mind, Caleb? And, and uh, what, which player, or let's, let's have, what are the top four players in your mind? Top four players of Tennessee. See, this is a you top pick. seven. It's so tough, but without Dalton Connect. Okay. Bernard King is obvious, right? Yes. I'm going Bernard King. I'm going Chris Lofton. I'm going. Grant Williams. Is that four? No, that's three. And I'm down to Dale Ellis or Allen Houston. And I'm taking Dale Ellis. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm All taking right, so Dale Ellis over Allen Houston. Put it, up on, put it up on the poll. 60 seconds. I'll tell you why it's connect. Banks & Jones? Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks & Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks & Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. So our poll question is, who would you pick if you were starting a Tennessee basketball team? Would it be Dalton Connect, Bernard King, and what were our other two choices, Caleb? Well, oh, I was going to say, who would Dalton Connect replace on the um, all-time Tennessee now we're gonna basketball? Say you're starting your team. You're starting your team. Who are you taking? I'm taking Dalton Connect. Hoping I've got two or three years out of him. Okay, who would you start your team with? Okay, would you start your basketball team with? Or which form or fall? Sorry. Okay. Okay, well, so we're going to go. We'll go. Okay, so add options. We'll go Dalton Connect. And we'll say Bernard King. I'm going to go Chris Lofton. And I'm going to go Grant Williams. Uh, Travis uh, says, I consider him the best player we've ever had. I think he is too, because he's a three level player. I don't think you can stop him. I think you could just take, I think I was proven in, in the Purdue game and they were throwing all kinds of looks at him and he still ended up with a solid game. And I think they use like four different defenders on him too. Uh, so I think so he's the one starting lineup. Pardon me. Let's do an all time starting lineup for Tennessee. Basketball. Well, I will. We will. We will. Um, but to me, He's. I'm not going to put him against uh, above Bernard King because if not for the injury in the NBA, he probably is one. Of, I'm told by people I trust, one of the greatest NBA basketball players, you know, top 50 top player of all time, and I think he might have been close to the top 50 anyway. But 
Short of Bernard King, I'm taking Dalton Connect. I've got to start my basketball team. I can make arguments against any of those other ones. Allen Houston can't play defense. Chris Lofton can be stopped uh, if, if you really want to take him out of the game. Grant Williams is an all-everything player, but is he elite at everything? Uh, Ernie Grunfeld, as you said, maybe relied on, a little bit more on Bernard King. So I can't. I don't think I'm leaving any, anybody out uh, of our group. But I can make arguments against each. Dale other. Ellis, maybe. I think Dale Ellis is like. Um, Dale Ellis I was feel- a. Dale Ellis was a post player, and I know that you probably saw him shoot threes in the NBA and you're thinking Dave has been drinking this morning, but no, he, he was a post player. He was a, a one level player. Dalton connects a three level player in, in college. So I don't consider that one even that close. Now, if, if Dell Ellis had shot a bunch of threes in college, then I would have said, Oh wow. He's a great, great shot as well, but he did. All right. So you're all time top five. We want to hear you on no, the starting five top five is not the same as starting five. That makes it more difficult. Sure. All right. Starting five, so go ahead and put it on the message board, and if you got a good one, we'll take care of you. Um, all right, so my starting five, I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you that I'm gonna go small. Let me hear of yours first. All right, so my point guard, and this is by default because he's not a top five player, but Ernie Grunfeld's the only elite Tennessee legend who actually can play the point. Is that fair to say? Like you can't put Chris Lofton or Allen Houston or Dale Ellis at the point, and you can't even mm-hmm. put Bernard King at the point. Well, you take away a, an awful lot of what Lofton did. I mean, he could do it, but coming off screens, yeah, I, I would hate to take that away from him. Yeah, so I got Ernie at the point. I got Chris Lofton at the two. I've got – you've convinced me. I've got Dalton Connect at the three. I've got Bernard King at the four. And honestly, this is where the trick comes in is the five – I don't know who I would start at center in my all-time starting five. I think I want to go way out of left field. His number's not retired, but you probably know of him, Dave. Reggie Johnson. Remember him at Tennessee back in the day? Uh I do. Played here at Ernie and Bernie Show? I'm going to tell you who it should be. You ready? Okay. I'm ready. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have had that Purdue collapse if this guy would have been part of your starting five. Stevie Hamer, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Hamer. He, the seventh footer who could play defense, that would be my starting five. Here's your problem. Because that way I can't bump into a Purdue in the tournament that just outbigs me. Because I want to go small, but I got one big. I'm basically Houston is what I am. Houston's you are tell- this year. You are telling me that Tennessee had a player who could start on their all-time starting five and Allen Houston, and couldn't win, have a winning record in a season? Stop. Hamer time. Yes. It's exactly right. It's Stevie Hamer. He played Wait, in the NBA. But if Stevie Hamer belongs on the all-time starting five, and Allen Houston was on that team, how did they have such a bad record during that time period? Was that just Wade Houston that bad of a coach? Yes, but Stevie was also young when Allen was older. I don't think they overlap by a lot. Well, they, 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 they overlapped. They overlapped for about two years. And Wade Houston couldn't get past the first round. Of yeah, and they're just horrible. Um, and that's Wade's fault. But, you know, I would take Marcus Hayslip, honestly, over that, over Hammer. Well, the great part about, about that season is that Wade Houston didn't miss any of his stories because he was a big soap opera fan. Sports Treasures carrying over 5 million sports treasures <laughs> And so much more following Facebook for the best sports mem- memorabilia, daily updates, Sports Treasures TN on Facebook, Sports Treasures TN. So my five is um, basically the same as yours, except I got Stevie Hamer in there. there you go. So you're bring so we're keeping. Uh, mm-hmm. Wait, so you're starting Chris Lofton over Allen Houston, too? Oh, yeah. I am too. Yeah. So, but, I but the Allen is, couldn't play defense. No, you're right. Well, neither could Chris, really. But that's true. But coming off the bench, think about the bench Chris, day because you have. But Chris couldn't play it because he was size challenged. I mean, <laughs> Allen Houston. Ha- I mean, Allen Houston. Don't laugh. Allen Houston had the body to be able to be a great defender. Yeah, he. he that's true. He, he had that. 
And he had great integrity. You almost like, have to, heating you and almost air have to, 50 years in East Tennessee, integrity matters. Don't trust a fly by night. HVAC company to tell you that you need a new unit that can cost you thousands or more. Cityheatandair.com. Cityheatandair.com. Yes. You almost have to do like what, like, because like now basketball is not about starters. It's about your rotation. So that'd be my starting five. But then Dale Ellis and Allen Houston would be in my rotation right off the bench. Right. And then Ron Slay would be in my rotation right off the bench. But like those guys, like I think all eight of those guys are interchangeable players. That we just named, and even Reggie Johnson, number nine. Um, because you said Steve Hamer, I said Reggie Johnson. You get those nine guys, like you can just run them in a rotation however you want, right? You just need another point guard, at which point I'm throwing in either CJ Watson, CJ Watson is my other point guard. Hey now, CJ what, about Watson Harris? Harris, what about Tobias Harris being dropped out altogether? Tobias Harris phoned in that season until he could go to the NBA. Now, it's not fully his fault. He was playing the season that Bruce Pearl was basically a, a dead man walking. Remember that? Like, we we yeah. all knew he was going to be fired. I mean, I can't really blame he, Tobias Harris. He, yeah, no, he didn't. And uh, somebody mentioned Tyler Smith. He didn't really give it his best shot. <laughs> um, who I would can't coach take either this of those team? No. Who would coach this team? That's easy. It's Ray it's Mears. Hey now. No, it's hey not. It's Rick Barnes. Hey Rick hey Barnes now. is better than Ray Mears. Ray, Ray Mears, Mears can get up coach. and down the floor, sell the program. That place will be packed. The program is what sold. About, okay, what about Bruce Pearl? Would it be Bruce Pearl? That's crazy. It's Rick Barnes. It's Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes is the best tactician that Tennessee's ever had coaching. I'm just going to say it. Ray Mears was a tournament flame out for a reason, guys. You suck. He, he was a Ray Mears was a salesman, which helped him recruit. Bruce Pearl was also a good salesman and the best. I'll say Bruce Pearl is the best inbounds coach I've ever seen. And SEC football, who's been our MVP of the board today, said so Dave is coaching it. I'll go ahead and tell you, I'll make the Sweet Sixteen with that crew. I'll win you give me, title. you give me those dudes relative to the time they played. I know <laughs> athletes are better nowadays, and blah blah blah, and they've got more training. But relative to the time they played, oh yeah, I'm going Final Four with Dave Hooker as the head coach. How's that sound? The real question is how have they not made the Final Four with given their history? <laughs> I mean, it's so bizarre, is it not? It I was is. talking with a friend this morning, and I was just like. Something about that orange jersey when you put it on says not going to happen in March. Yeah, not going to happen in March. No, that's that's true. Now, you could do an all-time starting five of great players who had limited team success, funny enough, because you'd have Alan Houston and Tony White on there. And Don't I put mean, the wizard on there. Huh? I don't put the wizard on there. Tony Watt was like my – I had two – Johnny Jones at running back and Tony White at point guard. Those are my first two favorite Tennessee players, so I have an emotional but he had, pull. he had limited team success. He never made the NCAA tournament. I know, but it, it just – you know, I don't, don't want to get my feelings hurt. He's Caleb. Like, yeah, he's players good. who were stuck surrounded by crappy talent and crappy coaching who were cursed by bad talent and coaching. Are we doing uh, football or basketball? Because Basketball, oh. but you can do football too. If we're doing football, it's uh, JC. I hope everyone had a fantastic Easter. It's Jonathan Crompton. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. This has been a presentation. Did you see what I did there with Easter? The JC thing? Oh, my God. Did you see that? <laughs> Off the hook sports. Have a fantastic day.